Hey y'all, I have a plan. And it's a plan in a competitive sort of way. So <laughs> let me show you. This is my new dwarf papa. And you're probably thinking, well, Susan, we've been watching your channel for a while and you already have papa trees. As a matter of fact, I have one, two, three, three, maybe four of them. And why do I have those? Why to attract the elusive zebra swallowtail butterfly to my garden. And I've had my pawpaw tree in the ground for two years now. I haven't seen a sign of a zebra swallowtail. So I've heard, I've heard through the grapevine, the butterfly raising grapevine, that they prefer the zebra swallowtails, the dwarf pawpaw. So I got my hands on one. It's a scrappy, scrappy looking little one. It was the last one at um, Sweeping Nursery. And I got it. So I'm going to pot this baby up and we're going to get it out in the garden and see if we can't lure in the zebra swallowtail. And why is it a competition? Well, I'll explain as we pot it. Okay, well first, I've got some sandy soil with some rocks in it from my garden. And I'm just going to add some of my potting soil and mix it in because it likes a sandy, well-drained soil and I want to give it the best conditions possible so it can do its job. So there is a certain viewer who uh, watches my channel that is also trying to lure the elusive zebra swallowtail to their garden and so he and I kind of made a little deal at the end of last season, I think, to see this season, like which one of us would be successful. Well, now, shh, don't tell him, but I've got the secret weapon because apparently it's the dwarf pawpaw that you need. So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how good a job my little dwarf pawpaw is going to do. Because I, I literally, what, I have two, four, four leaves. But these leaves, they are going to call out to that zebra swallowtail and say, come to my garden and come to my garden before you go to the garden that is up north. And this little cutie is going to get a special location right outside the door where I can keep an eye on it. And you know what's even funnier is um, this viewer, he lives in Pennsylvania and uh, I live in Florida. So I got a head start. I got a pretty serious head start. So my zebra swallowtail better come through and come find my dwarf pawpaw tree quick because I'm excited. I really, 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 really hope I get these caterpillars in my garden. I actually hope my friend gets these caterpillars too. Oh, and what's that right there behind me? What does that say? I know this video is not sponsored by Ace. They don't even know who I am. I just think it's funny. All right, on to the next thing. Y'all look who's getting bigger. <laughs> They're so adorable. Hey y'all, I just got home from work and <laughs> I just checked in on those sweet, adorable baby caterpillars. I just cannot tell you how much I love coming home from work and knowing I have caterpillars again. 
and they're so cute. And I love that I don't have a ton of them and that I'm growing enough food for them in, inside that, you know, I don't have to worry about coming out and getting cuttings and washing the cuttings. Like, I just take cuttings from my milkweed growing inside and just give it to them because I know it's clean because it's been inside. It is the most fabulous thing. So I'm just heading now up into my potting tree house. I have, I have a milk jug up here that I tried winter sowing some um, swamp milkweed in and I just want to come and see if anything's happening in it. So far swamp milkweed just does not want to grow for me. Why is it that I can grow everything that's not native, that <laughs> fabulously, but the native stuff is like, no, we're not, I'm, I'm not going to grow for you. I'm not going to grow for you. So swamp milkweed needs cold stratification, which means it has to experience cold weather. But I'm like, this is Florida. Is that really a thing here? So um, a way you can like outsmart that is by a winter sowing which means you plant the seeds and you put them out in the garden so they experience winter but they're in a container so when they sprout you have them contained so you can pot them and grow them and the other thing is to take all the seeds and put them in some vermiculite and perlite and stick them in the refrigerator for 30 days and fake them out so they think it's been winter and then you plant them just like any other seeds and they should grow none of these things are working for me none of them so anyway I've got this little um, let me show you this little milk jug here and um, I've got my soil in it and I stuck my seeds in it uh, it's been out here since um, middle of December maybe and absolutely nothing is happening you see anything? No, nothing. So in the house, I did the cold stratification, right? And I've got a whole seed tray in there of the swamp milkweed seeds that I did cold stratification to. Absolutely nothing. I mean, what? Swamp milkweed, hello, hello. What does it take? What does it take to get you to grow? I talk to other people. Some people say, oh, you just throw it out and it grows. I'm like, I, I have the swamp milkweed curse. It's me. I have it. Why won't these seeds grow? So I've got another set of fresh. I ordered some fresh seeds from Joyful Butterfly. I got some fresh seeds from the nectary. Um, Catherine gave me some to try, some that they gathered from a friend of theirs. It's, it's all fresh. And so they're now in the refrigerator, cold stratifying, having their fake winter. I mean, what? Am I, am I missing something? Am I, have I missed something? Do y'all know the secret? Do y'all know? Somebody tell me. I need to know. I need to know. Oh, and did did I tell y'all that I may or may not have broken my foot? And so a lot of my big and so a lot of my big gardening plans have kind of been put on the kibosh. What does that phrase even mean? On the kibosh. I hope y'all know what I'm talking about. I think that's an older phrase. I'm giving away my age. So, like, there's things... There's things that I still haven't planted yet, like those grasses. See them behind me? They're still in the pots because I may or may not have broken my foot. And it's been... This has been going on, what, two, three weeks now? I haven't mentioned it because if you don't talk about it, it's not real. I've been trying that, but it's not working for me. Um, so anyway, I went to the urgent care and it might be a stress fracture, but they don't show up in x-ray. So they're scheduling an MRI, which this is fabulous. I mean, 
you may or may not have a broken foot, right? Well, my MRI is February 13th, so I get to, I, I have the walking boot, which, which is, is just beautiful, said no one ever. And so I'm just hobbling around in my walking boot for two weeks, and then I'll have my MRI, and I actually get to find out if my foot is broken or isn't broken. But meanwhile, I can't do a lot, and I'm just I'm kind of annoyed. But there's a really cool bee right here, so we're gonna go look at that. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at this. My outside balloon milkweed has been egg bombed. I am not stocked up on enough milkweed yet to support this many guys, but look at them all. Yo. Look what I did. I, I just can't resist it. I can't. It, it's an addiction. Modern caterpillars are an addiction. But, I mean... They're gonna be so adorable. And this will like stock my monarchs like for the beginning of spring. So, you know. But honestly, this balloon milkweed's super healthy looking. So what I think I'll do to save my milkweed stock is um, when I bleach wash these, they'll be on this plant. So the plant will get bleach washed as well. And I'll just let them hatch on here and eat all of this. <laughs> And anyway, I didn't bring them all in. Like, there's still a ton more out there. I'm telling y'all, like, they went wild out there. There's eggs everywhere. So, so there's going to be a lot of caterpillars out there also. This makes me happy. So I'm getting ready to place an Amazon order because I need more of my, um, uprising bloom and like this is getting low too my uprising grow what i like about this fertilizer is it's like in a powder form and i can just sprinkle it on the plants and water it in so i don't have to like pre-mix anything i just go out in my garden or my greenhouse and just sprinkle it on and then get the hose and water it in so i still love the tiger bloom too but you know, each has its own use. Like I use the tiger blue more for the stuff I'm growing in here. And then out in the garden, I find that this is easier to use. I am also going to, well, wait, let me go show you what I, what I, what else I bought. So I bought two more of these shelf units. They're like little rolly carts with drawers. And honestly, I just take one of the drawers out and run the wood beams through it. So I ordered two more of the carts. I get them from Michael's. They're the cheapest there. They're like 30 bucks for the cart. So two carts is like 60 bucks. And then you just go get some wood from um, Lowe's or Home Depot. It's cheap. I mean, relatively cheap. And you got yourself a whole growing system. Well, I mean, you got to get your plant lights. So anyway, I have two more of these. I'm going to go buy Lowe's this weekend and get more wood. I'm going to order some more of these because I absolutely love them. And I've got to get another uh, power strip with the USB plugs. And I'm going to run a whole nother line of it, probably down this back wall. And I'll probably move this, this little um, set up over. Look at all this space I have, y'all. I'm sorry about the lighting. It's not the best in here right now. <laughs> but I've got all this space that I can fill with milkweed to feed caterpillars. So I'm gonna be good to go, which is why I feel a little secure about bringing in more eggs. Didn't take much convincing. Y'all, I can't think of a better way to end this video than to show you that my sleeping hibiscus is blooming. Look at this gorgeous color. And look, look at all the buds. There's another one. This is a host plant to, oh shoot, is it the gray hair streak? I'll go look it up and come back and let you know. But here's the name. I 
I'm going to go look it up right now and I'll let you know who it's a hose plant for. This is one of the ones I have. Remember when I made my little water, water area? And I have um, two of them in here. And this is so exciting. It's so pretty. Oh my gosh, you guys, I just looked it up and I had to, I had to write it down because there's so many things it's a host for. Four, four, one, two, three. <laughs> I can count. <laughs> three butterflies, the gray hair streak, the painted lady butterfly, and the common checkered skipper. And moths, a bunch of moths, the pearly wood nymph, the yellow scallop moth, the I.O., which is fabulous. And, all right, are you ready for this? Because I didn't even know this was the name of a moth. <laughs> but I am in love with its name. You ready? This is a great way to end this video. Okay, here we go. The Delightful Bird Droppings Moth. That's right, you heard it here. The Delightful Bird Droppings Moth will host on this beautiful sleeping hibiscus right here. I hope it does, because I really feel like I need to see this moth. All right, well, sorry this wasn't super exciting, but you know, there's a the whole foot thing, and, um, but I feel like it was pretty informative. I mean, we learned about some plants and some um, butterflies, and you know, my little, my little dwarf, um, uh, why well, can't papa? It's the papa. I'm a little dwarf papa tree that is gonna bring in that zebra um, swallowtail. So anyway, and remember the red trash can. Remember what that means. Go do it now, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everyone. Yeah, look who's in here. A local fritillary. Come here, baby. Come here. Let's go set it free. Come on, Ray. Let's go. Let's go. Let the butterfly fly. All right, ready? There you go, baby.